Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling, Feed the Machine, the newest album from Nickelback. Yeah, we're going to put ourselves in this shit, sorry. <laughs> we made our own bed, so we have to lie in it. Well, in the beds are full of nails. <laughs> now, uh, where to begin with this album? Uh... Well, it sounds... Like Nickelback, but somehow better than Nickelback usually sound, but still not great. It sounds like earlier Nickelback, that's the thing. Yeah, I would say that. When they were slightly less commercial. I mean, I did have a copy of Silver Side Up when I was a teenager. So... Silver Side Up yeah. was like the last okay album that they did. Which, well, before this one, which I'd say is the next okay album that they've done. Yeah, I'll probably say that. I mean, we should talk to them a lot, but in this case it seems to be a case of it's not really that bad, I guess? I mean, it's not anything I go up my way to listen to, but some songs, yeah, they're pretty alright, and some songs just, no, get away. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say the rating yet, but our rating seems to be in would probably be in line with all music, so... So, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know much about this album except what's on the wiki. Um, the title track was the first single, and the second single was Song on Fire, which we'll, we'll get to that when we get into the album proper. Um... And Must Be Nice was made available on their YouTube channel, and it was given away to those who pre-ordered the album? What? Stick it to, you bought our album, here's have a song for free before the album actually comes out. Even though it's a song on the album. Well, that's just kind of a, a nearly tease, I promise. Yeah, but surely if you were going to make a special song for people who pre-ordered the album, surely you'd make it something that's not available. Yeah, but then you get that whole idea of having stuff that's only available to those who happen to pre-order it. Yeah. And that is a shitty way of doing things. Okay. Oh, I don't deny that. It's just, it, it's a bit, it strikes me as a bit weird. Um, a bit of a funny thing I discovered. Um, Stone Sour, uh, well, Corey Taylor specifically, was challenged by Chad Kroger to do a chart-topping song. Song 3 by Stone Sour hit number 1 the other day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, and the thing is, it's one of those, the way it sounds, it sounds like a typical chart-topping rock song, but almost all the lyrics are kind of a satirization of chart-toppers. So it's one of those, I see what you're doing here, Corey. Um, yeah, that was just... That just stri struck me as a rather amusing... I like to, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Getting onto the album proper. I think, as far as I'm concerned, the easy way to describe it is... I Well, I, imme I immediately abandon all hope of anything original. This is Nickelback we're talking about. You don't expect originality from them. Yeah, I think it's one major criticism with the album is the fact that it's just very standard. Yeah. We think of, you know, rock music about, you know, love and being a teenager or rebellious kids and more love. I don't think they're going to nickel back then. Yeah, it sounds about that. Yeah. I mean, what's really notable about the album is that it is actually palatable. I think one of the major reasons I've had with the earlier Nickelback stuff I've heard is musically they're competent. Yeah. But I don't particularly care for Charlie Kroger's vocals and his songwriting is questionable at best. Mm. And well that's what I'm meaning by it being halfway palatable because at least some of the songs on this album are much more lyrically agreeable than what has come across in the past because um, I'm going to make a reference to another reviewer um, 
I can't remember the name of the reviewer because he doesn't use a special handle or anything. It's just that it's rocked reviews. Um, he has this series called uh, Regretting the Past, and he's covered Nickelback albums. And he's mentioned how some of the songs on those albums come across like a Denny stalker. Want to just you explain that like you did to me for our viewers? Yeah. Uh, so by that, he's meaning that there's this creep hanging out at a at a Denny's or so, some other similar sort of fast food restaurant, and he's creeping on all the attractive women, and um, you kind of get the vibe that he call the women in Victoria's Secret magazines his girlfriend and that sort of thing. Um, and that is basically the vibe that I get from Must Be Nice. I mean, well, Must Be Nice has the problem of A, it sounds like the Denny Stalker, and B, most of the lines are fucking nursery rhymes. Yeah, it's an old song. So it's, it's a... It's sort of like Jack B. Nimble, Humpty Dumpty. I was half expecting Little Jack Horner uh, or I'm a Little Teapot to be said. And what's really bad is the fact that the chorus is singing about living in a fairy tale. These are not fairy tales! Also, well, just the, the vocal effect there is kind of. Yeah, just not particularly good, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I will say this much. It sounds like Chad Kroger finally swallowed some fucking strepsils for once. It's, his voice does sound a little bit cleaner. But I think the album also starts out a lot stronger than it ends. Because personally, I think the first two tracks are probably the most palatable ones for me. Mm. Uh, this is where I feel like this album should have been an EP instead of a full-on album. Because there's, like, for me, five or six tracks that are outright ones that I might go back to. But the rest are just, you know, I would easily cut them. I, the one, it, I might as well say, because it's such a 50-50 split, I might as well say which ones I would keep. Like the title track, I think is a good opener. It is yes. I mean, first I had the first out, first song, and on starting the album, I was like, "Holy shit, Nickelback actually got kind of alright." Yeah, I mean it. It has that. It has a good energy and drive to it, and it has a decent hard rock weight. Uh, coin for the ferryman. I quite like that as well. Yeah, really like that one. Um, for the river, I I quite got into um. I, for me, that had a bit of a Blackstone Cherry vibe going for it. Yeah, I've noticed actually that Blackstone Cherry seem to be Nickelback, but better at what they do and with less cringy vocals. Mm. <laughs> because inherently Nickelback's structures are pretty standard but effective. But this is something. I think it's just. Mostly just Trikoko, in fact. If you play Trikoko or someone else, you probably have a pretty good band. <laughs> His songwriting and vocals are the main issues I have, so. In fact, if they were an instrumental band, they'd be pretty damn good. Hmm. Um, the Betrayal Brackets Act 3, I quite liked. It really bugs me that Act 3 is before Act 1 and there's no Act 2. Yeah. So what are you on about? I was actually looking through the tracks, sort of like looking on the Wikipedia page, and sort of like, wait, have I lost a track or something? <laughs> Have... I don't know whether Act 2 was on a different album or not, but if it was, why the hell is Act 1 and 3 here and 2 on a different album? <laughs> I will go check, because this is going to bug me if I don't... But even if it is an Act 2 somewhere else, it doesn't explain why these are backwards. Yeah, there is uh, supposedly a, the Betrayal Act 2, but I... Uh, but... God, the, I don't know! I don't get it! What the fuck? Oh, oh boys. Hmm? I'm assuming it's on a different album as well. Yeah. Was it a bonus track or something? Uh, I'm not sure. It All I'm able to find is The Betrayal Act 3, The Betrayal Act 1, and then on Last FM, there's Act 2. But 
that's the only instance I can find, at least on the first page of Google. <laughs> Honestly, if anyone can answer this question, please tell us, because I am confused as all fuck. <laughs> I think it's even more it just bugs me as to why Act 1 uh, is after Act 3. Uh, why? Yeah. For what purpose? I mean, both tracks I, I do quite like, but I don't understand why it's why the titles are that way around. In fact, it would make sense if the final tract was titled Act 3, because it does sound like a final act kind of thing. Although most plays have Act 5, but whatever. When it comes to songs, I, I almost only ever... I can't think of any instance where I've come across Act 4 or 5 on albums. I've only come across Act 1, 2 and 3. Yeah. I think Act 3 actually sounds more like an ending song than Act 1 does. Act 1 sounds like a uh, interlude to me. Mm. Um, Silent Majority, I thought, was okay enough. The problem is, it's very obviously fuelled by the current political climate. It is, yes. Which is especially bad when you consider that Nickelback are Canadian! Because everything you ever loved comes from Canada. Three Inches of Blood, Devin Townsend... Nickelback. Fuck you. <laughs> the Wrestler Edge. Yeah, there's quite a few things from Canada that I really like. Well, it is to produce quite a lot of interesting things. However, they also produced Celine Dion. <laughs> And Avril Lavigne. Anyway, should we get back to uh, Song on Fire, everyone's favourite song? Oh god, Song on Fire. That's a, That was basically How You Remind Me, remix number 217. That was less reverb. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember listening to, the first, listening to Feed the Machine and Calling for the Fairy it's like, hmm, I did not expect Nick might actually be this competent at what they're doing. Well, I didn't expect them to be competent, but... This enjoyable, I guess. Mm. The song on Fire came on, and I was like, ah, oh, this is why I don't like Nickelback. Jesus Christ, this song is fucking terrible. It's the most whiny rock ballad garbage. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I downloaded the singles before I listened through the full album. And so I was, I was already predisposed towards disappointment at that point. I didn't realise it would be so early in the album. <laughs> well, you get out of the way early on, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, now, uh, to be fair, Song and Fire isn't quite how you remind me. There are good sounds to it, and it is heavier. The problem is, the lyrics are still how you remind me. They remind me I kind of have a little bit of soft spot of water, because I liked it when I was like eight. Mm. Oh god, it's that old, I forgot. I don't know, I don't know exactly how old it is, but it's, it's definitely from my childhood. So, I I want to say yeah. So we would have been eleven when yeah. that came out. Jeez. Ugh. Sixteen years of Nickelback. Well, to be fair, I just trying to find information. I also realised that there's been a cover of "How You Remind Me" by April Levine. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ. As you may have guessed from my podcasts or reviews or whatever they call this thing, we didn't particularly care for Avril Lavigne either. First album was alright, after that it just, just, just proceeded to get worse and worse ever since. I've just realised my nightmare scenario. Uh? Nickelback, Avril Lavigne and Justin Bieber. That would be unpleasant. And Celine Dion. <laughs> All with a backing group of Broken Side. And bring them to the horizon. I was mainly going for Canadian ones. Uh, What's Canadia? <laughs> um, oh. yeah. If you if, if, know like American memorabilia is Americana, does that mean like Canadian memorabilia is Canadia? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. You should ask someone definitely from Canada. Anyway. Well, I could do that, but that'd be... Uh, but, yeah, as for the album itself, it's better than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. But there's still a, a bunch of songs in there where I just, well, I've listened to them once and I don't ever want to listen to them again. Mm. So. Yeah. 
I mean, as I say, it, if it was an EP, you know, if you cut out Song on Fire, Must Be Nice, After the Rain, Home, Every Time We're Together, you cut out those and just have it as an EP, it would be somewhat serviceable. Yeah, that would actually be a pretty good way to be. Hmm. I mean, now, I'll say this much. After the Rain is a frustrating listen for me, because I really like the verses, both musically and lyrically, but the choruses and bridge are an interminable chore. Apparently something does happen in music, because you think, oh, we'd have a chorus in here, and it'd be different to the verses, and sometimes it's a serious, and it comes across as a huge mess. Mm. Or just decidedly uninteresting. Yeah. I mean, it's all like... The verses, they've got this really cool country blues feel to them. And I like blues. I, I, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it on previous shows, but I really like the blues. So, you know, you do a sort of country blues, that, sort of, that would be going into sort of Johnny Cash territory. And I love Johnny Cash. You know, if the whole song had been in that vein, it would be another one that I'd go, yeah put this on the EP. But the choruses and bridge are country and western. <laughs> and I hate country and western. But don't you like songs about you know, people in like redneck trucks and pitchforks and shit? Or D-I-V-O-R-C-E. <laughs> that is an actual fucking song! Jeez. Um... <laughs> But yeah. So what what I want to in there is when is the um, Nickelback Country and Western cover album coming out? <laughs> oh, don't even joke about it. You know it will happen. Yeah, I think several several of the songs that I would cut are the ones where the verses sound really cool, but the chorus fucks it up. That sound about right? Yeah. I don't know why it is the music that happens. I think it's because following a certain kind of structure of a chorus is just causes some kind of disconnect. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the standout song on the album? Standout song? I'll probably go title track, actually. Yeah. I think the title track... It's not a little strong and then blew their load way too long. Mm. Either the title track or For the River, but then again, it's because it's got the Blackstone Cherry vibe to it and... Blackstone Cherry are in the very few bands that I've actually seen more than once live. I think I've only seen them once. The first time I saw them live was um, I won tickets to see them. Never. It was one of those, I don't even remember entering that competition, but okay. And actually got to talk to them briefly at signing that they did after the show. So <laughs> It was one of those... Um, above studio sort of acoustic set kind of setups. Oh yeah. Do you think if you like a few things on this Nickelback album, I recommend just go listen to Blast and Cherry and Dead. <laughs> well, They're quite similar, but Blast and Cherry are just better in pretty much everywhere. Mm. Well, I'll say this much. Listen to it as an EP. Go through, just, I would recommend listening to the songs that we've listed as being suitable for an EP. Just forget everything else. Maybe listen to Song on Fire just to understand where we're coming from, that it's yet another version of how you remind me. But once. Once. <laughs> um, I think we, we can safely say that Song on Fire is the track that we would outright cut. Yeah, I do not like it at all. I listened to it the first time, I was like, no, nah, go away. Mm. We're dealing with that show. Yeah. I mean, I did listen through the whole album a second time just to see if I was able to beef up my notes. And with Song on Fire, it was just a case of, you know what, I can't do any more than say it's How You Remind Me Remix 217. But uh, even so, I reckon it is still better than either of us were expecting it to be. Oh, definitely. Um, one thing I will say, on the matter of The Betrayal Act 1, I don't know about you, but to me it sounded more like Blind Guardian than Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, I can hear that. I was, I was listening to it and it's sort of like, wait, when did, when did Blind Guardian start playing this? 
Um. <laughs> There's a blink card in a Nickelback cover burn after. Um, but anyway, uh, final score for the album. Uh, hmm. this is probably two. Just for well, mostly just for the title track and um, mostly for the title track for the river, going for the ferryman, both portrayals. I give it a two for that lot. Mm. Possibly one point seven five, just because the whole song on fire just sucks that badly. I don't know. <laughs> I'd say two two point two five. It's not quite a two point five because, as you say, Song on Fire sucks that much. But um, you know, title track, coin for the ferryman, for the river, both betrayals. Um, silent majority. I'm. Um, uh, that's kind of in the. I'd listen to it on a very minor occasion, which is why I've got a slightly higher score than you, but not by much. Yeah, but. To be entirely honest, I probably won't bother going back. Yeah. I might listen to one or two of the tracks from the album, but for the most part, I wouldn't come back to it. Uh, but I will say this much. Got a better score from, from me than um, Steel Panther did. Oh, jeez, you're right. Well, in both cases, it's just it's very standard. Yeah. It's just a case of... Steel Panther was even more standard and not as interesting as we were expecting it to be. Or Nickelback was more interesting than we were expecting it to be. So. Nickelback exceeded expectations. Steel Panther, uh, what's the term for it? Failed to meet. Failed to meet expectations. It's probably a more specific term, but oh, yeah. I'm too hot to think. Good yeah. But yeah, um... Not sure what we'll be doing next. I think next time that might be with a guest host next time. Um, yes, it will be with that guest host, Pierce. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, just have to wrangle them and basically go, Oi, you, pick an album for us to review. Whatever that may be. It'll certainly be interesting. But anyway... Nothing really more to say for this album aside from give it a go. If you are a Nickelback fan, you will enjoy it. Yeah, most likely. Because if you don't like Nickelback doesn't mean that you won't. Yeah. If we were people that openly don't like them and we're thinking it's actually this good, then it probably is pretty good. Mm. We just did this review because we've we've repeatedly bashed Nickelback, so we were kind of obliged to. It's kind of like the reverse effect of Devin Townsend or Calafina. Which we're going to have to do because we like them so much. In this case, it's, we've bitched about them so many times. But, oh, 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 oh god, you realise what that means? Oh. <laughs> what? We're going to have to review things like Broken Side Armor. I was thinking more having to review things like Dragon Force. Dragon Force is probably still better. <laughs> Well, true, but, you know, Dragon Force has been mentioned more times than Broken Side, I think. Quite possible. It didn't use the Boom Battle review mentioned in Dragon Force, like, every three seconds. Yeah. And that's still the most disliked video. Which is kind of weird, because they actually give it a pretty good review. Yeah. Which are the Dragon Force fans. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Um, Looking forward to their new album. Hmm? Boom Battle, that is, not Dragon Force. <laughs> <laughs> When's their new album due out? Fuck knows, there's no date for it yet, but it's going to happen at some point. Fair dues. But yeah, of course, it's kind of a... We've set ourselves up to both having to review both Tool and Dragon Force. Well, luckily, one of those reviews will never happen. <laughs> well, I was going to say, unfortunately, Dragon Force is like a thousand times more likely. <laughs> seeing as they did review... They did release an album this year, we just didn't get round to it because we didn't even know about it. And I think that might have been... That might have been the week that we reviewed um, Alphaville. I wouldn't like to yeah. say. Well, Alphaville was, was definitely uh, the better of the two. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm actually... When it comes to our year-end wrap-up, Alphaville, I'm probably going to say the rating has gone up. Alphaville, yeah. It's a very, very solid album, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, as for this album, we were certainly not expecting to be o as okay with it as we were. 
we were generally expecting this to be a very shouty, ranty review. So, make of that what you will. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, just to get it out of the way, fuck you, Final Fire, you piece of shit. Yeah. Just so we had a reason to moan and bitch. Yeah. But as for the rest of the album, well, as I, I'd say. That's a half the album. Half the album. Well, I will say, as for the rest of the album, because. So many of the songs that we'd cut, we'd cut based on more of a lyrical content than anything else. Yeah, because Frankly Jack Ruger is not the best uh, lyricist, lyricist ever. Yeah, to say the least. But anyway, whatever the next review will be, will be decided in... In due time. Yeah, in the next few days. I mean, we've had quite a quick turnaround for our reviews. Which is a good thing. Mm. I mean, it means there's actually more content for you guys to listen to. Yeah. And enjoy or hate or whatever you do with it. I don't know. Yeah. Or get aroused by it or whatever, I know. I hope you don't, but eh, it's up to you. Um, just going to do a finishing bit. Uh, if you do like what you hear on this show, there's the Patreon link that will be in the description. Uh, and for regular updates, I've actually got some a bit more active on it uh you, my twitter will also be in the description you can follow me there uh that also has a link to the patreon if you feel so inclined to go via that means patreon i'm starting to put a few exclusives here and there that's generally when i get copyright strikes because uh, we got a copyright strike from the anathema review um, it only went up like two minutes ago. Yeah. Well, the copyright strike hit it before it had finished uploading. Got an automatic system, yes. Yeah. I have counted it. I basically said, you know, this is protected by fair use because this is a review. You can't do that shit, but whatever. Um, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully someone will actually have a brain and realise that it is a case of, oh, we can't do that because they're doing a review. They're not actually uploading the whole album, you know, like it says in the fucking title. But that you know very well that do not like the music being promoted for free. Hmm. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean... We got over the um, Lindsay Sterling copyright strike, so Excellent. Um, I'm just going to do a very quick check for who. Um, right, BMG. Who are they? A subsidiary of? Oh, oh, they're their own company. So okay, so we might be okay. Be nice touch of your cables. Mm. But anyway, catch you next time. Whatever the next review is, as I say, possibly be a guest reviewer that time. Uh, of course, that depends on whether Pierce is free and all that sort of thing. Not jazz. Not that we're probably going to review jazz. We probably should at some point. Hmm? All, all that jazz. Not we've actually reviewed any jazz. But... Yeah, we should probably do that at some point. Or at least like jazz a... metal. Some sort of jazz. Yeah. Like Shining. Shining are an interesting band. Yeah. Jazz metal fusion. But anyway, catch you on the next episode. It's goodbye from me. And yeah, goodbye from me. Just for traitors, 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 just for tra